I want to talk about some different options if you are EFI and you want to go carbureted on a Fox body. Let's talk about what it takes to make that happen. First off, let's start with your intake setup. This is actually the easiest part of all of it. All you're going to do is take your upper and lower intake off the car. You're going to unplug your salt and pepper shaker, which has your injector harness. You're going to unplug that and you're going to put all this stuff to the side. You're going to notice that you're going to lose a couple connections in the process, but don't worry, we can get those back. So you're going to lose your temperature sensor and your oil sending unit. No problem. Set that stuff off to the side. So at this point, you're going to want to pick up a carbureted intake and a carburetor. Bolt those two down and voila, you have a carbureted engine. It is literally that simple. All right, so we got the front of the engine kind of buttoned up. Now you're gonna have to have some type of throttle cable. I suggest just going with like a 1979 Mustang throttle cable setup. It'll bolt right into your car. It's still obviously a Fox body setup. Put it in the car, hook that up. So now you've got a cable that'll work on your carburetor. Next up, you're gonna need some type of throttle cable bracket. So I suggest going on Amazon. I'll put up some listings right here for you guys. Pick up one of these, and now you got a throttle cable bracket and a throttle cable, and you can control the carburetor from inside the car with the pedal. You're halfway there now, guys. Let's go to the fuel system. You got a couple different options here. You can keep the in-tank pump that you have and just buy a really good regulator that can regulate EFI fuel pressure down to carbureted fuel pressure. Yes, it can be done. Years ago, that was a lot harder to do, but nowadays they got regulators out there that'll do the job. So I'll try to put up some listings for you guys right there. Now, obviously your connections are going to differ. So there are some AN fittings that you can adapt that will work off of your factory EFI stuff that'll go into the carburetor or either you can just run a in line all the way back and just get creative with it. So there's a ton of different ways to do it. The second option is gonna to be to take your pump out of your fuel tank. It's gonna have a cage around it. You're gonna to wanna to remove the pump from the cage, from the hanger that goes down into your fuel tank. Now you're gonna put a hose that connects at the top of where your fuel pump did connect in the cage down to the bottom of the tank. You can put yourself some type of little filter down there on the bottom of the hose so it doesn't suck up all the trash or you can just put a really good inline pre-filter before your pump. Put everything back in, zip tie it up in the cage so that it doesn't flop around, the hose doesn't, and you're good to go there. Pick yourself up a fuel filter, uh, Evil, make some really cheap ones, you can pick those up on Amazon. And I suggest that you absolutely 100% put a pre-filter, a filter that goes in front of your fuel pump. That way anything that does get sucked up through that hose will now get caught in that filter before it goes into the pump. Next up will be the pump. What are you going to do? You can go Holly Blue, you can go Mr. Gasket, you can go Carter. I mean there are so many different pumps out there, you're just going to have to select a pump for your needs. Most of the time, a Holly Blue will absolutely do most anything you want to do on a naturally aspirated engine. Now, you can just run some AN line up. You can get all that stuff off Amazon. There again, it's really cheap. The issue you're going to run into, let's go ahead and address it right now, is going to be... Oh man, I hate to do this to you because the video is about to get real good, but LMR's released another new product and you know I got to share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and check that out. I wanna show y'all something that you didn't know you needed. Now this is from LMR. They've come out with something new. I think you guys are gonna love it. And you're really gonna like the one that I chose. So if you guys are interested in what's in this box, head over to LMR right now. They've got all makes and models. <laughs> Look at that. So this thing is made from metal. They've got all the different styles that you want. And I chose a coupe for you guys. Can you believe it? I think I'm gonna paint mine. Let's do it now, come on, screw it. Nice. <laughs> See, matches almost perfectly. There we go. If you guys would like to pick up one of these, head over to LMR. They're always coming up with new stuff, so it's good to check in from time to time. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. How do you control timing? Timing's controlled either through your MAF sensor or either through your MAP sensor. You got a couple options here. You can go ahead and lock the distributor out at 30 degrees, 32 degrees and hope that the car starts. Generally it will, about 30 degrees, shouldn't have any problem with the car starting. The little pill that you pull out when you check your timing, you're gonna take that out of the front of the distributor and you're gonna set that off to the side, put it somewhere where you can find it later on if you ever need it again. Now, if you're gonna be running nitrous, this is where you start to kind of run into an issue with this setup because 
if you're running nitrous, you have to turn the timing down. So you have a couple of different options. You can just go out to the front of the engine, loosen the distributor, and back your timing down to where you feel like it needs to be. Sure, that's a good option, but now your car is going to be sluggish on motor. So when you're driving around, you've had to lower the timing, the car's not going to perform good. Or either you can buy an MSD setup, which is probably the most common, like a 6AL box, an MSD distributor, and a timing retard box. What that'll do is allow you to have a knob that you can increase the timing when you're on motor driving around and you want the extra power, and then you can turn the knob down, retard the timing, and spray in nitrous and be safe. That's an option, but it's an expensive option. And honestly, not that easy to wire up. One more option for you guys that I think is probably the best. That's gonna be a mega squirt or micro squirt. Check this out, y'all. All you gotta do is pop the mega squirt in, one 10 milliliter bolt, hook up a vacuum line from the back of your intake somewhere down to your mega squirt. It has a built-in map sensor. This map sensor is going to allow the car to read vacuum so that way it knows what timing table it needs to be in. That's how a speed density car operates is off of a map sensor. So what this means is you can go in now and you can set your timing up in one area for idle at 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 12, 13, you name it. And from here, you can build a nice, pretty linear timing table if you want to, more like a stock car. Like a stock timing table would work with this. That still doesn't solve our problem for nitrous though, right? So how do we address that? There are inputs on the mega squirt. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a ground signal that triggers another table. So it's called table switching. So when you activate or arm the system, you can have that send a ground signal over to the computer and then it switch tables just instantly without you doing anything other than flipping the switch. Once you set this up, you can now switch to a table that'll have lower timing so you're safe. So imagine this, you're cruising down the road, you're ready to make a hit and you're like, shit, man, I need to set my timing, right? I got my timing up too high because I've been driving around for you know two weeks, driving this thing back and forth to work. Now I want to make a hit. I got to get out and do this. Nope, you don't. If you set this up correctly and I won't get into actually how to do it, you can look that up yourself, but once you get this set up, when you flip your arm switch, it'll send the ground signal over to the computer and then the computer will switch tables instantly. You never have to get out of the car and you got a preset table there. So I think that might be the best option for a lot of you. You know, if you're looking into something like this and, and you want to go carbureted and you want to go nitrous and you're like, how am I going to control all of this? I don't want to have to wire up an MSD and, and a timing control and all this stuff. Well, here's an option. And remember guys, you get to leave your factory distributor in this car. Put yourself a nice coil on it. Put a, a screaming demon or something like that on the car. That'll be more than enough fire to do whatever you need to do with this thing. You don't have to have an MSD box, but you could still run an MSD box with it. I apologize for having to do a voiceover on this video. I'll throw up as many pictures as I can for you guys to try to help you out and show you what I'm talking about. But these are actually harder for me to do than getting out there showing you. The problem is, is I don't have a car with all of the stuff taken apart to where I can show you. Obviously, there are other options out there. You can put a Holley Terminator X on the car, which would work perfectly, no issues. You can still run a TPS sensor if you want to. You can also do that with the Mega Squirt as well. So you can log your TPS. They make kits that'll bolt to your carburetor. You can still hook up your water temp sensor. That way the car pulls timing if it sees a certain temperature. There are so many things that you can do with an EFI setup controlling timing on a carbureted car. And that's what I want you guys to know. You don't have to go out and buy an MSD setup. And to be honest with you, the MSD stuff these days is not that great anyway. I would much rather rely on my old 30 plus year old wiring than some of these new MSD boxes and coils because I've had a lot of trouble with them. I'm not saying they're all bad, but a lot of us have had issues with them. I know I've went through two MSD coils recently and uh, yeah kind of done with that stuff. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. Get after it. Enjoy your build, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. And as always, thanks for watching.